on the stage now. Honorable Minister of State for Road Transports and Highway. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together as our Chief Guest joins us on the stage. Together to welcome your drumming angel onto the stage. It is an honor to be invited. It is an honor to be invited to deliver a few words on this momentous event and share the stage with no less than General V. K. Singh, the Honorable Union Minister of State for Civil Aviation and also for Road Transport and Highways. I also I am honored that Mr. Manoj Chauhan, Mr. Vijay Mehta, Sina Sahab, Telochan Ji, and many distinguished guests, along with Lord Dolly Ranger, who's 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 doing this all for his great uh, grandfather, a uh, great father, I'm sorry. So the Shaheed Narak Singh Foundation has made significant contributions in keeping the memories of a brave freedom fighter and a spirited human alive. I commend the foundation for carrying forward Shaheed's message. It's a great learning from none less than Lord Ravi Benjaji, Member of House of Lords, UK. It is impressive to see Lord Rami Ranger live up to the ideas of his illustrious father. I thank you from the bottom of my heart, Lord Ranger, for paying tributes to the sacrifices these freedom fighters made for the country and what they paid for our freedom and to remind us all that India, soul of Atma, as a secular and democratic fabric, we are equally for all is enshrined regardless of caste, creed, and gender. Shaheed Nanak Singh Ji said, said, said this, India's unity and diversity are like the colors of a rainbow. It, one, if one, one is removed, its charm and beauty would be diminished. His message of unity is an important today as the day he tells us why he fell by saving innocent lives. Shaheed Nanak Singh ideals of religious tolerance and peaceful coexistence are imperative for a civil society. We cannot let anything divide us. Let's promote peace and celebrate unity in diversity. Jai Hind. कार्यक्रम के मुख्य मेहमान मेहमान है खुशुसी माननीय मंत्री श्री वीके सिंह जी ऑनरेबल मिनिस्टर ऑफ सिविल एविएशन एंड रोड ट्रांसपोर्ट एंड हाईवेज ऑनरेबल लॉर्ड रमी रेंजर साहब संदीप मारवा जी सीआईसी श्री सिन्हा और तमाम हजरत और खुवाती आप सब लोगों का इस कार्यक्रम में पहुंचने पर हार्दिक अभिनंदन स्वागत है आमतौर पर यह देखा गया है कि अगर किसी देश को तरक्की करनी है तो उसमें वक्त की पाबंदी बड़ी जरूरी है हमारे जहन में एक पुरानी बात थी कि मंत्री हैं तो आमतौर पर देर से ही आएंगे लेकिन आज हमको इस बात का एहसास हुआ कि हमारा देश जो तरक्की कर रहा है वो है समय से पहले चल के माननीय मंत्री जी जो आज जिस जिस तरीके से वक्त की पाबंदी के साथ आज पहुंचे और इन्होंने हम सबको आवाज रख दिया उसके लिए ये बात साफ होती है कि कैसे हिंदुस्तान मोदी जी के नेतृत्व में तेजी से तरक्की कर रहा है और कैसे जनरल वी के सिंह जैसे जो नेता हैं, जो वक्त के पाबंद लोग हैं वो हिंदुस्तान की तरक्की में सहभागीदार कर रहे हैं शहीद नानक सिंह जिस दौर में राजनीति में थे उस वक्त हिंदुस्तान और पाकिस्तान के बीच एक बंटवारा हो रहा था और उन्होंने मुल्क की एकता के लिए अपनी जान ली अप्रैल उन्नीस में मुल्तान के उस स्कूल को मैं याद करता हूं जिसमें छह बच्चों की जान बचाने के लिए उन्होंने अपना सुप्रीम सेक्रीफाइस किया और ठीक उसी तरीके से जनरल वी के सिंह ने भी हिंदुस्तान की संप्रभुता आजादी के लिए केवल ढेर सारी लड़ाई लड़ी बल्कि मंत्री बनने के बाद भी चाहे वो यमन हो चाहे दूसरे खाड़ी के देश हो और यूक्रेन हो 
उन देशों में जाके हिंदुस्तान के बच्चों को हिंदुस्तान के डायस्पोरा को और वहां पर रहने वाले अलग अलग व्यक्तियों को इन्होंने बचाने का काम किया तो शहीद नानक सिंह मेमोरियल लेक्चर देने के लिए इनसे बेहतरीन व्यक्ति कोई नहीं हो सकता आज शहीद नानक सिंह के विचारों की सख्त जरूरत है और जनरल वीके सिंह शरीफ के महानुभाव उस काम को बखूबी कर रहे हैं आप तमाम हजरात का यहां पहुंचने पर बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू सो मच सर इट्स माय ऑनर एंड प्रिविलेज टू इंट्रोड्यूस टू यू लॉर्ड रमी रेंजर सीबीई प्लीज जॉइन अस एंड डिलीवर योर स्पीच Ladies and gentlemen, it's a great honor for me to be here in front of you, and I'm indebted to General Vikas Singh Ji, Union Minister for Road Transport and Aviation. Only a general can control three, four departments at a time. Used to control many departments under him. The country or community is as great as its leader. And we are today celebrating the leadership of our Prime Minister, Mr. Modi. He has not only made India a force to be reckoned with, but it's a positive force, a force which is benefiting the world, developing world. We are very privileged to have such dynamic leader, and Modi ji has done another remarkable thing. He has handpicked. His ministry, his ministers, each one of them are an asset to Mother India, and you can see proof of the pudding is in the eating. Once upon a time, I used to go to Indian Department, Government Office. The answer used to be, "Ab kal aaja na." Aaj Mantri ji samse sabse pehle aaye. That just shows the change has come <coughs> in India. It's a great honor for me that I have with me there are some of the very important people of the dais. Sandeep Mahawaji, you don't need any introduction. The man who has put Film City in the heart of India in Delhi. Yash Sena Ji, the in, uh, Information Commissioner of India, son of an illustrious general, General Sena. He was the Deputy Chief of India Indian Army. Jana Sewa, <coughs> remarkable person. I had the honor, privilege of meeting him on many occasions. Jana Sewa had a memory that was remarkable. He could remember everything. He did. He delivered the second Shri Narayan Singh Memorial Lecture. It was fascinating of him listening to his life story and what he had done. He remembered the partition. I think he was a captain at that time during the partition. How he had to rescue people from fleeing <coughs> for Pakistan. Mr. Jodi, as you know, being BJP leader, I call him the dynamo of BJP. I don't know where he gets the energy. In the morning, evening, nights, I get his messages and Twitter and everything. He reignites people like me. Who have passed their self by date, and as the lady told me by date or date, they were born in 1947. There are not many 1947 models working. <laughs> but with the grace of God, God, with the help of my beautiful wife Renu, who has always supported me, given me always encouragement. You know, you can't do it alone. Whatever I achieve today is a collective effort. Wife is the number one asset, and if you have to watch your back, you can't watch your front. You have to keep watching. They do look after the after children, home, family. Not only that, she went out to work, for extra income, which we use to educate our children, and they are shining also in their own field. I have remarkable staff, and one of them, some of them are here. Mr. Mohan Kurana is here, the architect of my business. Who gave me some ideas, and the, the, you know, when you get the ideas, you have to use them. <clears throat> Sadat Sanoshan Singh is an institution in himself. He is a 
murky facet person. History, knowledge of history, knowledge of so many things. We learn great deal every day. Every day we learn something from God's greatness. Janusov, you know, a remarkable person who has given me this strength for me to have this lecture. Without Janusov, this lecture was not possible. Next, we have my younger brother, advocate, Supreme Court, Manoj Chauhan. Then we have Anit Nandaji. Then we have Vijay Mataji. He's a consul general of Romania. Yeah. So the visa to Romania is open. <laughs> and further, we have the, for the British High Commissioner, Mr. Richard Barlow, representing Her Majesty <coughs> of So thank you, Mr. for your spending your time. We are here to pay tribute to a great man who was a visionary. My father was a visionary. He pleaded with the Indian Muslim leader not to cut him off. After independence, India would be a secular, democratic country with one person, one vote. Together we we'll make our destiny. Unfortunately, he was trying to save some students who had taken on a procession against the partition of India in Bhutan, Deary School, who got caught in communal riot. My father, being a local leader, went to save them. He managed to save the student, but he lost his life for his industry beauty. The reason we I bring this lecture is his message is become even more important than ever before. Because we are now living in a global village. We are the world is shrinking. We have to work together, we have to live in harmony. And as my father used to say, India's diversity is like the color of a rainbow. Its charm will diminish if one is removed. So each one of us are Indian first, before we became Hindu, before we became Muslim, Christian, Sikh, Jain, Buddhist, anything. But India was first. So therefore he said, we must Consider ourselves first Indian, then follow any religious way of peace of mind. The unity of India is cannot be compromised because that is why today we are what we are. And those who know the history, India was India is a six thousand old civilization. We were ahead in everything. You just have to see some old temple to see how this marvelous architect took place. Without the lifting gear, cranes, JCB, without the grinding material, how did they make this masterpiece two to three thousand years ago and they're still standing? But we were not united. Because we were not united, we paid a heavy price. And I think we should learn from our history to make our future that at any cost we must remain united and only then we can progress like we are progressing. And India is not only <coughs> shining in India, Indians are also shining all over the world. India is exporting doctors, solicitors, businessmen, scientists, teachers, <coughs> you name it, to the world. And during COVID, we played a very crucial role with so collaboration with Oxford, those vaccines produced in India were given to poorer countries who could not afford expensive Pfizer or biotech. So that's how it is. IT industry is making life much easier. India is number one pharmaceutical because of India's pharmaceutical prices. Poorer country can afford it. So you have become a force for good. And I'm working very hard, looking forward to UK-India trade deal, free trade agreement. That will be the mother of all trade agreements. That will be between the number fifth and number sixth economy. And given the size of India's market, it will be a huge boost to the economies of both the countries. So, because on top of that, we share each other's values. We're both secular, democratic country. 
with the rule of law at the heart of our democracy. So we don't have to watch our back or front when we're dealing with each other. Because our values are the same. We put human freedom at the heart of our democracy. We were poor after independence, but we were free. We were liberated. We had so much freedom, it only came to me when the Soviet Union collapsed to see people in Romania, Poland, how they were suppressed. We were not suppressed. Right from the day one, we were given freedom and a fundamental right. So these are the good things we have to offer to the world. Our leader like Mahatma Gandhi, they are global icon. They not only shape India, but they also shape the world. As you heard, my father was assassinated before my birth. So I'm a posthumous child. But his vision is very important, and the vision is empowerment of women is a prerequisite for civil and progressive society. We must seven brothers and one sister. No father, lost everything, lost our ancestral home, country, breadwinner, arrived on a refugee train. Thanks to my father's deportation, we were allowed to sit on the coal tenders. We could get on the train. And the engine driver knew my father. He, he had read about his newspaper cutting your breast. So he said, Please sit on the coal tender. So you can imagine, I was two months old. We all came <coughs> on a refugee train, all black, everybody black to the refugee camp. And the remarkable mother, she was educated. And this is why I say to my fellow <coughs> brothers, that If a father dies prematurely, like my father did, he will leave behind a woman unable to deal with this uncaring world. A mother unable to look after your children. For the sake of your children, you have to empower women. Beside empower women, what she will have experienced in life, she can impart into her children, like my mother did. Five of her, her son became commission officer in the Indian Army. The same destitute mother became the proudest Indian mother. Two of my brothers took part in Lama War Battle. They were very proud of it. So I am there, although I was rejected by the Indian Army, I wasn't going to be left behind. I said, I will, I will do my best. So, you know, you get, you know, I was the youngest in the family, spoiled child. My brother was spoiling me. so. When I went to the United Kingdom, it dawned on me that I had to create my value. I had a lot of value back home, but I had to create my value. So uh, whatever I did, I did it with passion. My mother used to say, son, you don't have to be clever. You have to be sincere. And because of the sincerity, whichever job I did, whatever I did, those principles she gave me stood the test. It's a value, believe you me. Money does not make money. People make money. I didn't have a penny when I started. But at the same time, I want to thank the United Kingdom because of the British sense of tolerance, British sense of fair play, and on top of that, <coughs> British values. When I got there, the value, Indian value, British values, enhanced respect for women, respect for religion, Rule of law. All these are values which make the person a better person. So I ended up getting one after the other. One of my mother used to say, "Some money even a smuggler will have, but you need to make sure you have respect for your father." My father's statue is in our son. So people go their head and when they drive past, he died for a good cause. So then, so this is today we say, if we have to stay a very strong country, our unity must come. If we are not united, we will never be strong as we are today. And there are lots of enemies of India. Lots of people who envy. You know, you don't pity 
or a beggar. If you see a beggar, you don't feel pity. Or you sorry, you don't feel envious of a beggar, you feel pity. Similarly, the rise of India will attract lots of people who will envy India's rise. They will try to divide people, buy people, create things within a society or you know people with a bill. So we have a challenge, each one of you are an ambassador of India, each one of you have to do your own thing <coughs> to make sure that we leave a good, better country for the next generation. So ladies and gentlemen, I thank you for giving your valuable time to give time to that person who was only 44 years old when he was killed for a good cause, which is we are celebrating that we must learn, that we must remain united, and as we are a diverse country, we have more religion, more uh, culture, languages, we have to stay united. So on that way, Jai. Unique privilege to introduce uh, General Dr. Vijay Kumar Singh. One. Uh, General Singh was inducted into the United States Army War College, class of 2001 graduate, International Fellows Hall of First Indian Armed Forces Officer to be inducted. General Singh joined the Bharatiya Janata Party on the 1st of March 2014 and successfully contested the Lok Sabha election. For As Minister of State for External Affairs, General Singh has represented India at several bilateral and multilateral events as well as Special assignments like India Operation Rahat, Yemen, which was led by Indian and 960 foreign nationals of 41 countries, including USA, from the war zone. Presently, he is the Minister of State for Road India. Sir's courage and conviction, his highly acclaimed autobiography, has been widely read in India. Uh, I take special this special moment to keynote address. Thank you, Vijay Singh. Please put your hands together, ladies and gentlemen. It's a privilege to be here to deliver the keynote uh, address on the occasion of uh, Shaheed Nanak Singh Ji. Uh, let me acknowledge all who are sitting on the dais today with us. We have uh, Lord Rami Ranger. I'll also acknowledge uh, Lady Renu Ranjak, uh, Ravinder Singh Shiran, who's chairman, Shahid Nanak Singh Trust. We have uh, Excellency Richard Paula, the British High Commissioner, Sardar uh, Trilochan Singh Ji, Shri YK Sina. We have uh, Sandeep Marwa, Shri Vijay Jolly, Manoj Chauhan, Vineet Nanda, and uh, Vijay Mehta. And all the distinguished uh, who are sitting here, uh, may I uh, request you all to observe one minute's silence for Shaheed Namaste. When you try to find out more about uh, Shahid Nanak Singh, what strikes you is that here was a man who was not only looking at uh, India in the eyes of what probably we are looking today as a nation which is secular in all respects 
And when I say secular, I always uh, bring in the standards of the army in it. 42 years spent in the army, so I suppose I'll uh, keep injecting the army at times uh, to only emphasize a point. And why I say army? Because in army, in one tent, we can have all the religions. A small little tent, we can have the church, we can have the temple, we can have the Gurdwara, we can have the mosque. Whatever is there in the unit, it is all in one tent. It is the army in which we do not look at caste groupings. We look at what is on your shoulder, which denotes that particular regiment. And that is why I am a firm believer that in the army, whether it works in India or abroad, it is always able to achieve what is given to it. Shahid Nanak Singh Ji, born in 1903, died a very young person. In fact, uh, he died while saving the students who were going on to agitate that India should not get divided. And he had full conviction that India should not get divided on religious lines. He had an excellent career as a police officer and again it was his conviction that he has to do the right that despite a brilliant career with many gold commendations, he was shifted to Dera Ghazi Khan as a punishment posting. And this speaks volumes of a person for not only his conviction, but to carry that conviction forward. And that is what impresses one most when you read anything about Shahid Nanak Singh. And let me also add to it, I am a firm believer that adversities make a man. Adversities toughen you. Adversities make you more resilient. And if we look at the family today, if Lord Rami Ranger has done what he has achieved today, along with all other siblings of his, it is because of what he inherited from his father. What he inherited in terms of the conviction to achieve the best and to stick to that conviction. And that's, that's the contribution that one can look at the life uh, led by Shahid Nanak Singh. You only become strong if you are together. And that is one lesson that we should draw from the life of Shahid Nanak Singh. Remain united, do not get divided, whether it is religion or any other thing that is thrown at you. Therefore, it is something that we need to introspect in ourselves. Why is it do, that we do get divided? Why is it that there are some institutions which never get divided? Why is it that people make use of these divisions so that they can rule over us? Whether it is today's era or it was what happened earlier. And like I said, we are carrying those vestiges somewhere or the other. We are carrying those remnants in us as to what has happened and what can be done to keep the country under control. A country which is uh, so diverse that even if you were to take the whole of Europe, you won't find that kind of diversity. Every 100 kilometers your dialect changes, languages change, the way the language is written, that changes. The, the cultural differences, the differences in what we wear, the differences in what we eat, the differences of uh, whom we pray to. The differences are tremendous. 
And in this, we just have to look at our ancient history of what we had achieved before the invaders and the colonizers overcome us. It is something which is, and I leave it with you to think about it. Uh, it is uh, for us, if we actually want to carry the legacy of Shahid Nanak Singh forward, to analyze these few things so that we can make a better world today. Today, it is in our interest to ensure that our heritage, our culture, our thoughts of the ancient period are utilized to make things better for the modern world and for our future. One doesn't want to go back in times, but one must use if something was good and use it for the betterment of what is today. And today, there are a number of opportunities. If so many people from our diaspora are doing extremely well in the UK or USA or Europe and many other countries, it is their sheer diligence, it is their sheer commitment to professionalism. And that is what counts. I don't think we can find uh, any professional Indian to be lesser than anybody else with whom he works. And that is what our strength is. And I would uh, seriously suggest that that is one thing which was visible very well in Shahid Nanak. He is professional to the core because he did not accept what was wrong. He did not accept, even as a police officer, when ordered to open fire, that he should open fire on people who were unarmed and who were not at fault. It was his <coughs> profession. So that is something which uh, must uh, strike us. And I think uh, our uh, meeting on the occasion of uh, remembering him would be incomplete if we do not draw these lessons and take them forward. Let me also bring in a little bit of uh, religion into it. And I talk of Guru Gobind Singh, the tenth Guru. What did he do? He tried to unite India against the invaders. Who were the Panchpyaras? Look at the history of those Panchpyaras. They are from five different corners of India, five different places. He got them together so that he could bring unity in the community to fight against the invaders of that time. And to give them an identity which is very important, whether it is a nation or an individual. He gave them certain set of rules and certain set of codes so that they could they recognized, they could join together and they could fight another day. And lastly, he said, after me there is no Guru. There is only Guru Granth Sahib. What is there, is there, you understand it, apply it in the times that you grow up, utilize it as your kind. So he left a world in India which in true sense, was all encompassing. It was inclusive to the last world. So that is something which uh, we need to relook at, re-understand, and imbibe in us those values. I'm not going to say that you change your religion, <laughs> lest I be accused of uh, that. But what I would say is, keep your minds open. There's so much of good in India, that if we imbibe even one bit of it, I think we will become better persons, better Indians, better professionals, and people who probably would uh, walk the talk just like Shahid Nanak Singh. I thank uh, Lord Ravindra for uh, he met me, and uh, I think I was 
probably look at another skeptic when he opened this uh, issue of uh, a keynote address because uh, I was not so very familiar with Shahid Nanak Singh. I had heard the name because when you read about the partition in another period, the name does come up. And uh, then he left a book with me. I read it. I read it a couple of times. Because in one go, one reading only gives you a certain idea. Because when you read a couple of times that it actually sinks in what the person was. And I think I'm very <coughs> privileged to be here to be talking to you all and telling you that we as Indians can achieve you what we want to, provided we follow the only thing of not getting divided. We lost everything when we got divided. Let's unite. Let's forge forward. Let's all combine together and it is the combination of these 1.4 billion people that will take us wherever we want to go. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you so much, uh, General B.K. Singh Ji, for your awe-inspiring words and your nuanced understanding that you've displayed in, deliver, in delivering the Shaheed Nanak Singh Memorial Lecture today. The Shaheed Nanak Singh Foundation honors those who honor India with the Soul of India Award, which is now being presented to General Dr. V.K. Singh Ji, Honorable Minister of State for Roads and Transport and Highways and Minister of State for Civil Aviation. The award is being presented by Lord Rami Ranger CBE. So please put your hands together, ladies and gentlemen, as the award, Soul of India, is being conferred on General V.K. Singh Ji.